today I'm excited to uh, present our research titled Comparative, Ana Oops. Uh, Comparative Analysis of Discussion Intensity and Semantic Diversity in Early Versus Late Engagers, a study of Japanese tweets about ChatGPT. I'm Tomoki Fukuma uh, from Japan. Uh, I'm a founder and researcher at TDI Lab, and this is a collaborative work with NHK, Japanese public broadcaster, and the University of Tokyo. All right, uh, let's start with our motivation and behind our study. Uh, framing theory um, proposed by Entman in 1993 uh, suggests that selective information presentation can lead to misleading uh, impressions. Uh, for example, uh, ChatGPT can be framed positively as a revolutionary AI tool that enhances human creativity and productivity. And also using negative framing, uh, ChatGPT can be also described as a potential threat to human jobs and intellectual uniqueness. Uh, media that use those biased framing, for example, uh, explain on only one side, uh, can create false perception uh, to the public audience. So we believe that recognizing and sharing those un, uh, unfamiliar perspectives between people uh, can help resolve misunderstandings. Um, in our study, uh, we, uh, we developed a method to quantify the differences in viewpoints uh, between uh, two groups. Uh, so we can uh, find uh, the viewpoints only that have experts, and also uh, the viewpoints that experts might be missing. Uh, now let's move on to the introduction of our study. As you know, uh, ChatGPT has gained significant attention worldwide. In our research, we are particularly interested in exploring the differences of discussion patterns of ChatGPT on Twitter between early engagers, those who quickly discuss the emerging technology and late engagers who uh, join this conversation lately because we cannot access to the demographic of experts and the public. So we use this uh, dividing group. And this notion of dividing group is uh, inspired by innovation theory explaining how emerging technologies uh, uh, are adapted to the society. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, I'm sure that you, the participant today, uh, are mostly early engagers. Uh, do you have any experiences that feeling that only part of the information that you know is uh, framed and disseminated in the online media? Our hypothesis is that, uh, that even the tweet volume on a certain topic is large, that does not always mean that they have broader perspectives. Uh, as mentioned before, the key contribution of our research is the development of a methodology to assess the breadth, breadth of perspectives within each group for share, uh, within, the, within each groups. Uh, we, aim, uh, we aim to understand the differences of these uh, discussion patterns in quantitative way and qualitative way. Uh, next, we will describe the details of our data collection process and how we divided the user groups. Uh, we collected Japanese tweets mentioning ChatGPT through the Twitter API from November 30. Uh, this is the date ChatGPT was released and to the um, February 20. Uh, the graph shows the cumulative user count who mentioned ChatGPT for the first time during this period. As you can see from the graph, uh, the, user is, the, uh, the user is continuously growing. So, uh, so we cannot uh, make a, a group division uh, based on the original innovation theory. The original innovation theory uh, defines groups uh, into five categories, innovators, uh, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and loggers uh, with specific percentage. Uh, and you can see that users are growing. So we focus on the uh, 
floody seasons around the end of December, uh, we thought that this corresponds to the chasm that the, the term also uh, described in innovation theory that the, uh, those innovative products must overcome to, uh, to expand to the public. So we uh, up three, uh, split the user groups uh, with uh, November th from November 30 to uh, December 30. This is the early engagers. And the lady engages is the, the users who tweeted about ChatGPT from uh, uh, 31, uh, December 31. The key statistics of the data is, is uh, like this. All right, uh, in this presentation, we aim to answer three questions. Uh, now start from the first one, which topics do early and late engagers frequently discuss? Uh, we say also a quantitative analysis. Uh, I mean, uh, in this survey, we just focus on just quantity uh, and ignoring the semantic diversity. For example, uh, if one tweet about one feature is retweeted many, many times in specific groups, uh, we don't, uh, if they have narrow perspectives, but we don't care about that for now. We just focus on that uh, volume or intensity to that topic. So we show, uh, we'll show the high intensity, high intensity topics of each group. Uh, first, we apply topic clustering using the HDB scan algorithm, and we find 351 topics uh, in the data set. The determination of the hyperparameters is described in details in our paper. Uh, the graph shown here has the x-axis uh, representing the number of tweets by early engagers, and y-axis representing uh, the number of tweets by late engagers. And this means that the topics in the upper left corner uh, are frequently uh, discussed by late engagers, whereas the topics in the bottom right corner are frequently discussed by early engagers. Uh, we have uh, described the top six notable topic summaries uh, in the table, however, uh, Due to the limited space, it may be difficult to read the details in this presentation. So uh, I will, will provide a summary of this table. The key point is uh, the, the early engagers are more focused on the future and technical potential of AI, including upcoming enhancements and integrations. And the late engagers concentrate on the current applications and practical implications of AI, including its integration, benefits, and impacts on various fields. Uh, it is also uh, worth noting that uh, while there are more tweets originating from late engagers overall, uh, the early uh, engagers have a higher number of tweets per person, indicating a more active engagement. Uh, does this result uh, align with your intuition? Per personally, it's yes. All right, uh, the second question we aim to answer through our analysis is the uh, early and late engagers talk differently on the same topic. In this subsection, uh, we will describe our proposed method for measuring the semantic breadth between two groups discussing uh, on the same topic. To assess the diversity of viewpoints within each group, our methodology has uh, three steps. Uh, the first step one, we, uh, first we obtain textual embedding for uh, each, each topic. So the, uh, the, the red and blue points are in the same uh, topic, uh, but the, uh, the red one is from the early and blue one is from the late one. And we use a linear discriminant analysis to map uh, early versus uh, late user labels to decision boundary in the embedding space. So uh, I mean, uh, maximizing the the division, uh, and maximizing the uh, the variance between two groups, and minimizing the the variance within the same group. And so we can uh, think that this axis is the the axis of sem semantic axis, which uh, separates the discussion points. Uh, next, we project the data to 
uh, this one dimension uh, obtained by ODA and perform kernel density estimation. Uh, by reducing uh, this uh, dimensionality, uh, we can uh, clearly uh, better visualize and compare the ratio of viewpoints within each group, like creating a semantic Venn diagram. Finally, uh, we calculate the threshold to cover 95% uh, of the probability area to assess shared and versus unique perspectives. The final uh, step quantifies the extent to which early and late engagers share uh, similar viewpoints and the or have unique perspectives on this topic. By applying this methodology, we can effectively measure the semantic breadth and we can also, uh, conversely, uh, uh, we can uh, read the original tweets from the graph uh, uh, shown below uh, and understand the original post. So here's the result. And uh, the, in the semantic diverse analysis, our question is, on the same topic, do they talk differently? Uh, each point represents topic, and the x-axis shows the early engagers' breadth of perspectives. I mean, the the red circle, uh, the, so the, it's the sum of the unique viewpoints and the shared viewpoints, and the y-axis, the late engagers, the viewpoints. Uh, as you can see from the graph, and there is a difference in terms of breadth of viewpoints, and you can also see uh, more points are above the y equals uh, X line. This means that the, the results show, on average, late engagers encompass more diverse viewpoints than early engagers. This finding suggests that the uh, late engagers who represent the general public tend to have wider range of perspectives and approaches uh, when discussing particular topic related to ChatGPT. Uh, to get no more details, we will show you an example. Uh, we pick up the, this particular uh, topic uh, because this topic consists of rel relatively high percentage of unique points compared to the others. The exact, the exact ratio is shown with Venn diagram 0 0.46 and 0 0.17, 0 0.36. And yeah, uh, as we carefully see the original tweet, we named this topic as the chat GPT and human thought. Uh, we show two example tweets, uh, representative tweet uh, from each unique perspective. Uh, it says, uh, when using chat GPT, uh, this is a Japanese tweet, so uh, we used LLM to uh, translate it. Um, when using chat GPT, I'm starting to feel more strongly about something I vaguely sensed before, that human thought is actually just a bunch of sensory outputs that we try to rationalize after the fact, and maybe it's not really all that impressive. Um, the, 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 the viewpoint from early engagers have something like human thought and ChatGPT is similar. And uh, the viewpoint from late, late groups uh, has something uh, like this. ChatGPT only behaves as if it has intelligence, but in reality, it doesn't have a shared of it, a uh, shred of it. However, I wonder if some people in the world are similarly making judgments without intelligence. Uh, in contrast, my own thinking is truly intelligent. This idea is deep in it close to philosophical zombie theory, even if it doesn't go as far as a brain in a bad concept. Uh, the chat, so um, the later the group has the viewpoint that the chat GPT does not have intelligence, but some human too. So this is the, just the, uh, this is a mm, example, but uh, to pick up the original tweet and explain it only one is, uh, framed, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the first page. So I don't uh, really uh, want to do that, but uh, seeing the original tweet can understand uh, more yeah, uh, clearly, yes. Uh, to answer the, uh, the fi final question, uh, we examine the, uh, which group has broader perspectives. Uh, the, as we uh, have seen that uh, in the 
this page that uh, the leading gauges have uh, more broader viewpoints, but we also see that uh, in here, uh, there are more tweets originated from uh, lady engagers. So we might uh, wonder, uh, the big, it, it may came from the bias that the lady engagers tweet is more so that the breadth of perspective uh, becomes wider. So uh, therefore we corrected this, this uh, tweet volume bias and find which group has really had broader perspectives. To answer this question, uh, we examine the correlation between the tweet volume ratio and the breadth of perspective for each group. Uh, the x-axis has the, the tweet volume ratio, meaning that how much of the total volume uh, in tweet is tweeted by early or late engagers. And the y-axis shows the semantic breadth of each group. So we uh, confirm that the, the correlation if, uh, Correlation coefficient is 0.48 and for early group and 0.38 for late group. Uh, this suggests that the topics with higher volume of tweets in a topic might bring broader perspectives. Uh, but the, uh, the, the relation is not so, not so much strong, but it has uh, the correlation. So we uh, correct this bias uh, to uh, for by stratifying the tweet volume uh, into three folds, uh, the small group uh, and medium and large, uh, the color indicates this uh, three, uh, three uh, folds, meaning that this uh, is a topic uh, that early engagers are not relatively joining, and this is a, a oh my God. Uh, this one is the to uh, these ones are topics that are gauges are more uh, concentrated. Uh, so we uh, compare the semantic breadth uh, into th uh, with three folds, and we see that uh, uh, we find that the tendency that lady engagers speak more broadly even after controlling this uh, bias of tweet volume. This mean. Uh, so this meaning, uh, even controlling for the bias with the tweet volume, late engages speak more broadly. Uh, for me, it was a bit surprising uh, because uh, the researchers uh, or early engages have more knowledge uh, than late engages, but late engages have uh, more things to say uh, in the online social media. So in conclusion, uh, our contribution and conclusion, uh, our study makes several uh, significant uh, contribution to the field of online discourse analysis. Uh, first, we have developed a novel methodology to assess the viewpoint diversity among two groups. And the second, uh, merely discussing the topic frequently doesn't guarantee semantic breadth uh, is the, the, the takeaway note. Uh, the point uh, we want to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think this is the most important thing. Uh, we highlight the importance of comparing the viewpoint diversity for future online discourse analysis. And our methods facilitates intergroup comprehension by pinpointing unshared perspectives. Uh, in the future uh, direction, uh, we want to, uh, to conduct uh, the hyperparameter robustness survey. Uh, in our work, where well, there are a lot of hyperparameters, for example, the selection of topic clustering and the choice of clustering and the, the dimension of LDA or the hyperparameters of uh, current BSD estimation. Uh, these uh, hyperparameters uh, is related to the question about what is the difference of topic and the viewpoints. Uh, if you have any good idea, uh, please uh, let me know or let's discuss this topic or should I say viewpoints, yeah? Uh, next, we want to add some feature to find controversial uh, opinion. Uh, the, the example I showed uh, this one, uh, oh, they have a different perspective but not uh, head to head conflictive. Uh, finding those conflictive or controversial topic is um, maybe more valuable in, uh, in terms of getting knowing each other. So we are feeling the limitation of using the embeddings. 
uh, then uh, we are also interested in uh, investigating the the dynamical change. Uh, sometimes the viewpoints uh, might converge to a certain point or uh, polar polarized uh, for a long time. Uh, lastly, uh, we're also interested in applying to this uh, this method into real world application. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and once again, and I look forward to, to the exciting discussion. Thank you very much.